Hello, makers. This is Prof G. And if you find that a button that you've added to your microcontroller project isn't working, it may be because you need to slow things down. Now, the button press may be generating lots of presses in the amount of time that your finger is on the button, and it may even end up in the same state that you started in. Now, there are a couple of ways that we can fix this with a while pass technique called blocking and with a library that lets us use a technique called debouncing. We'll show you both. And along the way, we'll introduce the color wheel function, which will allow you to cycle through a rainbow of colors simply by passing in a number from 0 to 255. Let's code! Now, we could demonstrate this with a single LED bulb, but if you've been working through a CircuitPython school, you know that we love using our NeoPixel strip. This will also give us a chance to introduce the color wheel function. Now, the wiring that we're using is the standard wiring that we've been using in our earlier CircuitPython school videos. Here, I'm using an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect in this build. The button digital in is D2. The NeoPixel strip digital in is D7. But you should be able to use any CircuitPython board. Just change the digital in for the button or the NeoPixel strip if you use different pins. Now, before we demonstrate problems with buttons, I'm going to introduce the wheel or color wheel function. Color wheel is actually a CircuitPython built-in, so even though we use an import statement, we don't have to add anything to our lib folder. We just call from Rainbow IO import color wheel. And now color wheel takes an integer from 0 to 255, and this graph shows how the color output works. The bottom axis is the number that you pass in, so pass in a 0 and you get 255 red, but no blue or green. Pass in 85 and you get full on 255 green, but no red or blue. Pass in 128 and you get a mix of half blue and half green, but no red. Now this value here is where violet is in the rainbow spectrum, and then we loop back to red. So if you go from 0 to 255 and you restart at 0, it'll look like you've got a smooth transition throughout the entire rainbow, elegantly transitioning back to red. Now even though this chart shows RGB values, this function actually returns a single integer, but a new NeoPixel function that accepts the RGB tuple should be able to accept the integer return from color wheel. So for example, if I sent 128 to the color wheel, like this line here, I'd actually get back a single integer, which wouldn't mean much to you. It's number 32,385, but the NeoPixel library will interpret that number as no red, but half green and half blue, like this point right here just as if I were to send it a tuple containing 0, 128, and 128. So now that we know how to use color wheel, let's write a quick demo to constantly loop through all 256 colors. So we'll hop over to Moo, and I'll call this code pulse the rainbow, and I have to import board, time, and NeoPixel. Also from rainbow IO, import color wheel, and we'll set up our light strip and call it strip. So I'm gonna say strip underscore pin equals board dot D7. That's my digital in from the NeoPixel strip and strip underscore num underscore of underscore lights equals 30. That's yeah, because there's 30 lights on our strip. Strip equals NeoPixel dot NeoPixel, capital N, capital P, and in parentheses, strip underscore pin, comma, strip num of lights, comma, brightness equals 0 0.5, comma, auto write equals true, and I'll adjust the font so this is all in one line. Then below the wheel function, we'll write a while true loop, and we'll loop through 0 to 255 with 4i in range, and in parentheses, 256, and in a colon. Then we'll just say strip.fill, and the way that we get the RGB color that we want to use to fill in our strip is we're going to call color wheel in parentheses i. So color wheel returns a color that we can use inside a strip.fill. Then I'm just going to call time sleep for 1 one hundredth of a second, 0 0.01, and that's it. I'll open the serial console, I'll save code.py to my circuit pi volume, and look at that. We're cycling through the colors, restarting at red. This looks beautiful. Mission accomplished. You now know how to use the wheel function. So here's the challenge, and new CircuitPython programmers might struggle to get the answer for this, but that's okay, because this gives us a chance to show us the problem and two solutions we could use to overcome the problem. So first, see if you can solve the challenge. So start the device, all lights should be off. When you press the button, the wheel cycle should begin. It should start at zero, and it should continue until the button is pressed again. At that point, the cycle should stop, and all the lights should turn off. Now pressing the button again should restart the cycle at the exact color where the cycle was stopped. Now, if you think your code looks like it should work, but it's not working, you might need to fix the button so that it reliably reports state true or false, and we'll show you how to do this with both blocking and the debouncer library. But first, give this a shot and see what you come up with. Pause, try it out, let's compare answers, but before I show you a working answer, I'm gonna show you the common problem that will occur first. So back in Moo, I'm gonna call this pulse the rainbow with button start stop, 
and I need to import the digital IO library since I'm working with buttons and we'll create our first button named button. We'll set that equal to digital IO dot digital in out capital D capital I capital O and we're going to pass in board dot D2. D2 is the pin where my button's digital input is wired to. And then a line below we'll say button, the object we just created, dot switch to input. And in between parentheses we'll pass in pull equals digital IO dot pull with a capital P dot in all caps up. And with this code button dot value will report false when the button is pressed. It'll be true when it's not pressed. Now I want to keep track of whether I am animating or not, whether the wheel function is running and I'm using the value return to change the colors in my strip. So what I'm going to do is just before the while true loop, I'm going to create a Boolean value called wheel underscore running. And I'm going to initially set this to false because I don't want the animation to run until I press the button. Now in my while true loop, if wheel underscore running colon, so that's if wheel running is true, it starts off as false, but when it's true, I want to fill in the colors of my strip with strip.fill. And the way that I'm going to get the current colors is I'm going to call color wheel, and I want to pass in, oh, I didn't create a value. So right underneath wheel underscore running, I'm going to create a value called wheel underscore value and set that to zero. Then down in strip.fill, I'm going to call color wheel, passing in wheel underscore value. And remember that function returns a valid color that we can use inside of strip.fill. Then I'm going to sleep for one one hundredth of a second. And now we're not going to use a for loop here. And that's because if we looped from 0 to 255, we wouldn't be able to detect if the button was pressed inside that loop and save the number that's somewhere between 0 and 255. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to add one to wheel value each time we perform strip.fill. And then when adding one goes above, 255 we're going to reset the wheel value to zero and that's going to loop through all the numbers from zero to 255 but it'll give us a chance at each loop to check to see if the button was pressed and to turn off the animation at that exact color so first let's write code to increment the wheel value and then below this we'll write the code to check to see if the button was pressed so first I'm going to increment wheel value by one and so I can say wheel underscore value equals wheel value plus one. Now there's another way to write this so I'm going to comment this line out so I can show you the other way. If I say wheel underscore value plus equals one that's the same thing as the line above it's just shorthand and you'll see lots of Python programmers use the shorter version of this. Now this will change my color one at a time, but one of the things that I want to do is I want to make sure that if I reach the color 255 and I increment by one, so I'm 256, that I reset wheel value down to zero. So in the next line I'll say if wheel value is greater than 255 colon wheel value equals zero. Now below this I'm going to handle the button press. So I'm going to check if button dot value equals equals false colon remember that means the button has been pressed when we're false. Then underneath that I'm going to say if wheel underscore running colon and so if I am running and I press the button I want to stop running so I'm going to set wheel underscore running equal to false. And if I just stopped animating I set wheel underscore running to false then I also want to turn off all my lights and I do that with strip dot fill two parens zero comma zero comma zero close two parens. Then below this, in the else condition, else colon, that must mean that wheel underscore running was false. So below else, I'm going to set wheel underscore running equal to true. And I don't need this old for loop, which was in the previous example, so I'm going to delete that. And you'd think this should work, but it won't. Let me show you what happens. Actually, before I go ahead and save, I'm also going to turn off all of my lights before my while true loop. Remember, all the lights should be off because we don't start the animation until we first press the button. So just above while true, I'm going to say strip.fill equals double parens, zero comma zero comma zero, close double parens. But in anticipation of this not working, I'm going to put in some print statements so we can see the wackiness that is happening. So after button.value equals equals false, I'm going to print in all caps button pressed. And then inside the if wheel running, I'm going to print turned animation off. And in the else condition, I'm going to print turned animation on. Now as I open the serial monitor, then save the work, then press the button, watch what happens. When I'm pressing the button, it repeatedly reports being pressed as long as my finger's on the button. So my code is flickering between true and false really rapidly. And what I want is just to toggle false to true or true to false every time I have a single press. And you can see that I'm not reliably turning the animation on or off. Yikes, this is definitely not what I want. Well, how can I fix this? Well, the first technique that I'm going to use is the blocking technique. And what that's going to do is it's going to wait as soon as a button press is detected and it's going to hang there until my finger is lifted off of the button so I can ensure that I toggle just once either false to true or true to false. Let me show you how we do that. So with blocking, we're going to write code that'll block any additional button value changes from occurring when the button is being held down. 
And here's how we do that. So right underneath if button dot value equals equals false, we'll write while button dot value equals equals false colon. Now what that's going to do is it's going to say, hey, while the button value is false, while your finger is still on this button, and underneath that we're going to put in a pass statement. This essentially says while the button is being held down, button dot value is false pass do nothing and continue to loop around until your fingers lifted off of this button and when that occurs button dot value is true so we're no longer in the loop now this is going to wait or block any further changes in the button until the button is released so we're going to hang inside of this little tiny while loop here so we won't get repeated true false readings since we're blocking any new readings until we release our finger from the button and the state changes from false which is what it is inside of this loop to true, which is where it will be once the finger is released. Let's try this out. So I'll open the serial console, I'll save, and let's take a look at what happens when I press the button. Look at that, button pressed, it goes on, starts animating, and then the animation's off, it's on again. I end around yellow, let's see if it starts at yellow. Look at that, looking good, I end it around blue. Start at blue, this is working perfectly. So we see our blocking technique does a great job of preventing the button from sending lots of value changes when the button's being held down. Now I'll show you the debouncing technique. So debouncing is actually considered to be a better technique to use, especially if you have other things happening around a button press and you don't want to block your code during the press, which is what blocking does. But either of the techniques in this video solve the problem that we're facing in this code. So for our use here, both are okay. So before I show you bouncing, which is the preferred technique, let's first save the blocking technique to our CircuitPython folder as blocking button wheel. Then I'll close this tab and reopen code.py on my CircuitPy volume. And I'm gonna add with debouncer to the comment. And I need to import the debouncer class from Adafruit underscore debouncer. Now I'll do that with from Adafruit underscore debouncer import capital D debouncer. Now what I'm gonna get is an error when I run my code because I haven't added Adafruit underscore debouncer to the lib folder on my CircuitPy volume. But I wanna show you that error just to remind you of the kind of error that you might encounter and how to fix it. You might know how to do this already, but it's good to show this again and remind everyone. So we'll fix that later. But in our code, now that we have debouncer imported, let's use it. So first, I'm going to change the name button to button underscore input, both where I create the digital in out object and below that where I set up the pull up resistor. And I'm going to do that because I want to use the name button for my debounced button. And below what we're going to do is create a debounced button object. And this is how we do it. So I'm going to name this button and I'm going to set this equal to capital D debouncer. And then in parentheses, I'm going to pass in the button underscore input object that I set up two lines above this. And so now we just created a debounced button called button and this is how we use it first let's highlight and delete this blocking code this while loop with the pass inside we don't need that anymore because we're not doing blocking we're doing debouncing then just before we check to see if the button is pressed we're gonna call button dot update followed by two parentheses so this is a method or a function that's attached to the button object that says hey get the updated status of this button and then below we're gonna check that status so while previously we use this line here if button dot value equal equal false for debounced buttons we check to see if button dot fell colon now that technically checks the same thing it checks to see if the voltage fell which happens when you complete the circuit and the high or pulled up digital in all of a sudden flows to ground so that's what happens when you push down the button the voltage falls and that's it so we don't need this line here the button dot value equals equals false I'm gonna delete that and we've got our debounced button set up no blocking required and just to show you we don't need to check the opposite condition but that condition is called button dot rows or a rise in voltage and let's set that up just so that you've seen this and you can use this again so we'll say down here in our code if button dot rows and then underneath that we'll print button released so now let's open the serial console we'll click on save and we got the error that I mentioned. Now import error no module named Adafruit underscore debouncer happens because the lib folder inside of my circuit Pi, which is my microcontroller, does not have the Adafruit debouncer library inside of it. But this is an easy fix. 
First, if I open up my CircuitPy volume and look inside live, I can surely see I do not have Adafruit underscore debouncer in here. But remember, we downloaded the libraries from circuitpython.org. And if you deleted those, you can just revisit that in your browser and download the libraries again. Just make sure that you download the version that matches the version of CircuitPython that's on your board. So I still have my original downloads on my Mac. So I have them up in this window here. See the bundle that I downloaded. And I'm gonna go into the LIB folder Folder where all the libraries available exist. And I'm going to find this one that says Adafruit underscore debouncer. And I'm going to drag that into the lib folder inside of CircuitPy. And now it's on my microcontroller. And when the copy is done, you notice that the serial console jumps a little bit. And that's because the board restarts whenever we do anything with the file system, adding files or deleting files on it. And when the board restarts, the code that we previously saved executes. And this time we don't see any errors in the serial console because we now have that library. So let's try this out. Out. Press released, press released, press hold, look at that, released, everything looks like it's working fantastic in here, everything is debounced. So we see everything is working great in here. The debouncing code works perfectly. So if you run into some problems with buttons, if you suspect that your button might be firing too quickly, now you know two ways to fix that issue. And the one that's preferred is the debouncing method that you just learned. So this code is super useful. I'm gonna make sure that I save this to my CircuitPython school folder and I'm gonna call this debounce button wheel. And for those taking notes, here's your recap. So you wanna make sure that you import the debouncer class from Adafruit underscore debouncer. Make sure that you've got this in your live folder on your microcontroller. You set up a button the same way you set up regular buttons, but then you take that object that you create and you run it through de the debouncer class and that's going to create a debounced button then you can call that button's update method. That's going to get the current button state, and you can check to see if button.fell, which is the situation when the button is pressed, and the state when the button has been released is if button.rose. If you found that useful, let me know. If you're new to the channel, check out the other things that you'll find at CircuitPython School, and keep hacking!